All right, then. So on this maiden edition of uh, Lagos Transport Trends and Perspectives, we're going to be looking or perhaps trying to make you understand the A to Z of the Lagos State Transport Policy. On the 28th of May 2024, Lagos brought out its main aim of uh, trying to ensure that we have seamless transportation by bringing to the public the Lagos Transport Policy. Yeah, well, Mr. Deputy Governor, talking about Dr. Kadri Obafemi Hamzat, was representing the governor on that day, and he made some very poignant points. He made some very, very salient points on what the transport policy is all about. I'm sure we all know the challenges that we have faced in our transportation system for far too long, ranging from transportation congestion to pollution, inadequate infrastructure, and many, many others. However, challenges present opportunities for innovation and transformation. It is with this mindset that we have approached the task of crafting a comprehensive transport policy that addresses the need of all negotiations. Lagos State Transport Policy is built upon a foundation of inclusivity, sustainability, and innovation. It embodies our commitment to providing a safe, reliable, and affordable transportation options for all our residents, regardless of their social economic status or location within the state. Moreover, it emphasizes the integration of our various modes of transportation. All right, then. So you heard the deputy governor there speak on the Lagos transport policy. At the time, it was unveiled about five or six months ago. So this morning, what does the transport policy seek to achieve? What are the aims and objectives of this policy? And what are the components that the Lagos State transport policy uh, threads on. So these are many more we're reflecting on. But let me bring in my guest to the microphone. Engineer Adirumu Agbomeji is a Director, Transport Policy and Coordination at the Lagos State Ministry of Transportation. Nice to have you in the building. Good morning, sir. Good morning. And how are you doing? I'm fine. All right. So look to your left. Uh, you can see the cameras here. Yeah. Uh, what do you make of it? Oh, this is beautiful. Yeah. And it's speaking to the excellence of Lagos as a leading state in the Federation. Wonderful. Yeah. Uh, can you identify any of those roads there? Yes. Which of them? I can see Alapore Junction. I can see Wemco Junction. And uh, I can see Ojota Interchange. Right. Yeah. So you're very familiar with the roads. Yes. As someone who has been working on them for several years. All right, let's uh, jump into the Lagos State Transport Policy because a lot of times uh, when we talk about anything that relates to governance, there's always a policy behind it, right? So let's start first by articulating the vision for the Lagos Transport Policy. What was that vision all about? Um, the vision, thank you. The vision for the Lagos State Transport Policy document um, started in 2019. 2019, the first draft of the policy came to being. However, when we now look at what is the current situation and what is the pillar of the present administration, there are a lot of critical issues that that transport policy of 2019, the draft, did not address. Mm. The present one that is being launched on the 28th May 2024 is a robust one that is comprehensive, that addresses all the critical issues of transportation in Lagos. Okay. So those are the major things. Right. Yeah. And what are the primary objectives of the Lagos State Transport Policy? The primary objective of the Lagos State Transport Policy is to project and a multimodal transportation system that is safe, adequate, comfortable, efficient, environmentally sound that we now add to the social, political, and economic well-being of Lagos. Right. 
So multimodal means we are running it on different modes. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. All right. So what are these modes? Ah, we can have the land, water, rail, air, pipeline. Okay. And so on and so forth. So these five modes is what has been articulated in this policy. So you're saying now, for instance, that even uh, pipeline transportation has also been captured under this policy? F exactly. And uh, I would need to even go down to tell you that this policy has 14 components. Okay, we'll talk about those components. But for those who are listening to us right now, when they say multimodal, I just wanted to give examples. You're saying, for instance, from rail, you can hop onto a boat or what? How does it work? Yes, multimodal. That is, we have a sort of integration of all these modes. We can, from, from land, you can hop into water. From water... You can go into rail, and from rail you come down to land also. That right. is multimodal. Right. So, meaning that all the divisions of the state has been captured in, in all of the infrastructure that we provided? Is that what it means? Exactly. All the divisions of the state have been captured. And uh, you see, this particular integration can be in two folds. Or two folds. One, it is either land water. It, is, it can either be water rail okay and all these are be captured with infrastructural development right so let's look at the key components of the transport policy what are the key components um the key component of the transport policy they are 14 in number okay number one is road infrastructure we cannot talk about traffic without talking about road development mm -hmm. we cannot talk about traffic Safety without talking about road sign installation on all our roads. Right. That is number one component. The second component, we we'll talk about road safety. Everybody is talking about Ember Mount, Ember Mount. This transport policy that has just been launched, which is first of its kind in, Leg in Nigeria, it talks about transport safety and transport security. Hmm. The other component of the, of the transport policy is traffic management. It has given us a robust and articulated mechanism or measures such that LASMA will be able to excel. Parking, unpack, uh, parking on the road will not, will, not be, will, not be, will be a thing of the past. Right. So that is another component of the transport policy. The other component of the transport policy is air transport. Okay. Lagos State by its nature as a commercial hub of the, of, the, of the nation and a driving force for national development is also looking towards air transport development. All right. So, apart from air transport, we have the rail transport. The rail transport, we've, we've commenced on the, the blue line, we commenced on the red line. Okay. And in the red line, we have a master plan for six different rail lines to to be to be to be to be done in Lagos State. That's according to the strategic transport okay, master yes, plan. Yes, according to the strategic transport master plan. So, having done up talked about um, rail transport, mm -hmm. we go to pipeline. Pipeline the, has also been captured by the transport policy. Okay. Then we talk about inland water, inland waterways. So that one is for us to have this integration that we're talking about the policy. That if you are moving from through the BRT, mm -hmm. you can up on the on the water to your destination. In other words, anybody from Ikorodu instead of passing through to mainland bridge, for to reduce your travel time, you can go through the waterways. Right. Then another component of the transport um, policy, policy. Right. Transport policy. Is the issue of public transport, either motorized, bus, or no bus. We can talk about the BRT buses that have been expanded, fleet all over this all over the state. It has also been captured in the in the transport policy. Then we talk about non-motorized transport, which is NMT. When we talk about non-motorized, we are talking about pedestrians using the walkway. We are talking about the cyclists, so that we can reduce the travel time. All right. So, these are many more. Are part are of the, the components. Are the part of the components of the transport policy. All right. It's a robust document, like you've said, but 
let's talk about how does the policy aim to address traffic congestion, for instance, in Lagos. That's a uh, an age-long problem that governments in and out have been trying to resolve. So, what is the policy saying specifically about traffic congestion and how they can address it? Thank you, Mr. Um, you see, the policy, like I said, is a very comprehensive and robust document that captures all the facets of transportation with 14 different components. In the area of addressing the traffic congestion, one factor is the over-dependence on private use of cars. So the policy is trying to promote adequate public transportation whereby everybody will need to bring, you have, drop your vehicle and go on public transportation. That is why we are talking about multimodal. In other words, from point A to point B, you can go through the land, you can go through the water, you can go through the rain. All right. Another aspect that the policy is trying to do in terms of re, um, addressing the congestion in Lagos is, is trying to bring the informal sector, all these yellow buses, into a formal regulated system that nobody comes into, into public transportation in Lagos. Okay. What, what are we trying to achieve? We want, to, we want the public transport in Lagos to be regulated. Once these are regulated, once we have the intermodal transportation system, once the BRT are functioning properly through the expansion of the road network, the last mass, the last mass officers are on ground to coordinate, to manage, to control traffic in the state. Then hmm. the issue of traffic congestion become a thing of All right, then. So one major thing that policies all over the world seek to achieve is to make impressionable impacts on the lives of the people that those policies are designed. So how will the transport policy in Lagos impact the daily lives of Lagosians? <laughs> the transport policy of Lagos, with all the robustness and then all the components we've highlighted, one, it will reduce travel time. Okay. It will bring about safety. It will bring about security. And it will promote social economic development of, of the state. Right. So safety, security, promotion of social economic development. And, of course, it will be able to also build the prosperity of Lagos. Is that yeah. correct? Exactly. All right. Exactly. Are there timelines for the implementation of this policy? There are timelines. The policy is dynamic. It is flexible. We have between one and five years for implementation. We have a review of all the, the policy. And presently, as I speak to you, the implementation is ongoing. Okay. And part of these components are already being implemented. One, when we talk about the, um, the rail transport, mm -hmm. it's being implemented. That is one of the components of, of, of the policy. When we talk about inland waterways, Lagos just acquired 15 omnibus for, for, for the last war. Okay. And it is to improve water transportation in Lagos State. So the implementation of the policy is ongoing and part of the component is being implemented by the agency under the Ministry of Transportation. And presently, as I speak to you, any moment from now, all other area of the component, they also be in the full in the full in the, in the, in the front burner all right then lagos traffic radio 96.1 fm lagos transport trains and perspectives is the program you're listening to and this morning we're trying to understand the a to z of the lagos transport policy and my guest engineer adirumu agbomeji is director of transport policy and coordination at the lagos state ministry of transport all right a brief break let's get to uh, the roads and still let you in on your movement from one location to the other. Yes, we did tell you this will be coming in on the Lagos Seabad Expressway. Uh, still, things are still looking very good all the way to uh, Alakbere. And of course, beyond that point, heading towards uh, the Third Milan Bridge is looking very, very good. 
Orile Igomu. Let me quickly run you through that corridor. It's good movement of vehicles from Nigerian breweries heading towards Igomu Bridge. It's looking very, very good. Uh, all, most of the vehicles have been diverted to Igomu Bridge. This is due to rehabilitation of work ongoing underneath uh, the Igomu Bridge. Uh, we can tell you Igomu Bridge down to areas like Donyi Bus Stop. It's also looking good heading towards Alagba. Uh, Orile Bus Stop as well as um, Oduade and uh, Koka Bus Stop. Suru Alaba and uh, Koscharis heading towards uh, Oshodi. We can tell you that talking about the Apapa Expressway is also looking good. Now, return journey from uh, areas like um, Signal Barracks down to Orile Bus Stop. It's also looking good. White Sand, Ascending Igomo Bridge, is also looking good. Down to Costain Bus Stop, all looking pretty good. Descending Oko Eco Bridge to Ijora Olokpa Turning uh, is appreciably good too. Loma and its environs, it's a steady movement. This is a beautiful morning. And then we can tell you, Ijora Olokpa is also looking very, very good. All right, then, Toby, uh, giving you more as uh, they come in. Uh, but you can also join the conversation as well as we talk about the Lagos transport policy. Uh, what do you make of that policy, by the way? From what my guest has said so far, what are your thoughts as it relates to the transport policy in Lagos? I would love to uh, hear from you. And that will be on 0809-120777. That's 0809-912-0777. And 0915-3. 877127. Okay, 0915387 Let's now dwell a bit on infrastructure for transportation, Engineer Agbomeji. So, what new road infrastructure projects are being planned under the policy? Um, new roads infrastructure are being planned. Um, you will we'll be talking about the quality bus corridor. Okay. The quality bus corridor is also an integral part of the transport policy and this one is being implemented by Lamata. Okay, Lamata is implementing that. Implementing that, yes. We have eight QBCs and Lamata will be starting the phase one on three. That is between the Juelegba Lawan Saint corridor. Okay. And they will be expanding expanding that particular road network to accommodate signalization, modern bus terminal, junction improvement, traffic signs, and lane marking. This mm. is to give priority to public transportation within that corridor. Then another one is towards Iju, Iju Fagba. Okay. Lamata is also working on that to improve that corridor for public transportation. It's um, QBC, quality bus. Corridors, right. Then, then we have the Igondo, Igondo area. Lamata is also working. And presently, as I talk to you, apart from road that I've mentioned, Lamata is working on the two, on the on, on the two interchanges that we have. Which of them? Uh, the the marina. There is expansion work going at marina. Okay. And then the my two right. axis. And when you go to my two today, the loops between my two also, Lamata is working on them just to improve the transportation infrastructure in Lagos right. and in line with the transport policy. L let's focus Lagos. a bit more on that mile two because that's uh, the noble one and it's the latest one that is really re receiving a whole lot of attention. What is the idea b behind that interchange? You see, the idea um, of the, behind that interchange is to turn is to bring, is to turn that area into a modern park of international standard. The way Oshodi has been done. So the idea behind it is to turn it into a a modern interchange for public transportation that will help the integration we are talking about, that will help the intermodal transportation we are talking about. So that's the idea. Okay. All right. So let's talk about public transportation because I know that um, you just mentioned eight uh, quality bus corridors, which the government has also designed that is being worked on. 
how will the policy improve public transportation systems? Uh, let's look, look at the existing one, BRT, uh, rail mass transit, water jerseys. Uh, what's the whole idea and what vision are we looking at? Are we thinking of comparing Lagos to some Western nations? or what, What's the idea? The idea is what you've just said. It's taking Lagos, what is the status of Lagos? A mega city. So the idea is to ensure that Lagos, eh, the status of Lagos as a mega city is still is maintained, is sustained. That is the idea behind it. Okay. Yes. Lagos as a mega city, a smart city, uh, yeah. and a city that uh, people can be very, very proud of. Yeah. All right, then. Let's see if we can expand the discourse beyond the studios. 80 We're talking the Lagos transport policy. What are some of those things that you've seen? Or perhaps if you've gone through that policy... What are the things that you've seen that you think can be worked on as well? And did the policy capture all sectors? Okay. Everybody in the society, are they captured under this policy? Uh, 80 99 uh, Question here says, how does the policy plan to improve public transportation options like BRT and waterways? This is coming from Olokpade, all right? I think you just mentioned something like that, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, Olokpade, thank you so much for connecting with us. This one says, Mr. Victor, what strategies are in place to ensure affordable fares for the average Lagosian? Afiz is sending that win from cement. Okay. Engineer Gumij, affordable, affordable transport fares. One of the objectives of the transport policy is affordability. I mentioned comfortability. I, must, I mentioned integrated multimodal system. I mentioned security. I mentioned safety and reliability. Mm. Yes, one of the cardinal objective is affordability. Presently, you can see what the Lagos State Government is doing in terms of cutting down the fear of public transportation, BRT, rail, and water by 50%. So the, the policy has captured in the entirety affordability as a key factor that we enhance. What is affordability going to do is to attract people into the public transportation system. What okay. is it again? Is to allow people to drop their car and go through the, the public, public transport. transport system. So affordability is key. But are mm. those public transport, are they readily available? They are available. We talk about the BRC buses. They are available. First of its kind in Nigeria. Talk about the, 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 the blue and the red lane. The first a state, the first in Nigeria mm. for a state to do. It's not a federal project. It's a state project. So they are readily available. You talk, I just spoke about the 15... Omi buses that was just launched. It's a 14 seater capacity um, waterways um, vessel that has just been launched. So they are readily available. Okay. They are reliable, they are affordable, they are comfortable, and they are efficient in terms of reduction of delay on the road or the traffic, um, that is travel time. Right. All these things. Idea. All right. For those of you who go through public transportation, you can also share your thoughts with us as well. BRT, he said it. They are readily available. The buses are always there. Is that your experience? You can let us know. This one says, uh, good morning, please. Are there any plans to integrate various modes of transport, such as buses, ferries, and the upcoming rail system? Oh, okay. oh well. <laughs> I think that's uh, uh, something in the open. But I'll allow you to respond to that. <laughs> Integration. Uh, integration. Integration is a key factor under the objective of the Lagos State Transport Policy. Integration. In other words, you can move from land to water. You can move from water to rail. And you can still continue your journey from rail to, to land, depending on your destination. So, there is integration. 
Okay. And it is a priority. That is why we talk about the multimodal transportation system of Lagos that is efficient. All right. Then if you wondered who is speaking with me this morning, I have engineer Adirumu Agbomeji. He is a director of transport policy and coordination with the Lagos Ministry of uh, Transportation. All right. This one says, good morning, Lagos Traffic Radio. What is being done to regulate the activities of the Danfos, Kekes, and Okadas? Or Laiami is sending that one in. So what is the policy doing to address... Activities of the downfalls, for instance, in the Yes, we, we, the policy. I will want to give kudos to Mr. Governor that has ensured that that policy was, was, was reviewed, upgraded, and launched, and first of its kind in Nigeria. Um, when we talk about that policy, like I said, the policy is total. And uh, what the policy is doing concerning the downfalls hmm. is that we are now going to what we call the bus industry reform. What does that mean? Bus industry reform. That we are bringing the informal sector, all the downfalls, eh, into a formal sector where they will be regulated. Hmm. Where you don't have, I come in into the business, I go out into the business. Before you can come into the business, you must be reg- you must be registered. You mean it? Yes. And then the state, under the Ministry of Transportation and Lamata, they are using the Lekki Aja Corridor as a pilot run. So you're saying now that Danforth will still stay under this policy? Because I remember there was a time, I mean, um, government was, this, was thinking of banning Danforth. So is the policy still considering them staying in the system? You see... Um, you cannot ban them for an in entirety. You can only have them at a section of the road. That's where we have the FLM, first and last mind. These downfalls will be the one that will take you from your home into the major up, and then we have the BRT high capacity buses that will run on that corridor eh, in a modern system. Right. So somebody says if you have, I mean, if you come into Lagos. And you see some of these downfalls with um, very, very uh, unsightly, let me use that word, uh, kind of structures. Some of them, no uh, windows. Some of them, headlamps are not even visible. Uh, Some of them, I mean, it doesn't portray Lagos in a good light. So why is the policy still thinking of sustaining downfalls as a means of transportation in Lagos? Say the policy is not sustaining downfall as a means of transportation. The policy will be will, is is trying to bring downfall, then bring downfall into the FLM style um, system, and then on the major on the major road of Lagos, it will be high capacity buses like the BRT buses. However, um, actions are on. For all these downfalls to be regulated through the VIS and through LASRI, through our own, our another department we call it public transport and commuter services, right? So that they can, it's not you can just you can't bring this policy will not allow individual like I said. So before you can operate any public transport in Lagos, it means you your vehicle must have been certified. Right. So the issue of rickety vehicle on the road we 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 will be a thing of the past. All right. All right. Angel Agbobeji is promising you, but uh, do you share his sentiments? Let me hear from you. 080 9120 and 0915387127. All right. Those of you in Ikorodu, what does the transport policy say? I'm sure you would like to ask questions around that. Those of you in Maltu, those of you around the Lekki, those of you around Yanokwaja, you can bring in your questions right now. 080-9912-0777 and 0915387-7127. This one says, good morning. Does this policy include eradicating the Agbiru's from the roads in Lagos? Because apart from extortion of the commercial drivers, they are an, they are an what an eyesore for a mega city like Lagos. Thanks. This is coming from Chile. So, what would you say? Yes, this po- policy. Like I said, 
I said we have the bus reform initiative. And what is that bus reform initiative doing? Is to bring sanity into our roads. And when you now talk about sanity, it means the issue of Agbero, eh? Mm -hmm. We have to be contained. But you, you, you must be wary that they are under the NURTW. All right, let's take this call. Hello there, good morning. Hello, hello good morning. Good morning. Simon. Yeah, good morning. I'm What's your name? From, uh, side. What's your name? Sulaiman. Sulaiman from Ijushaga. Sulaiman. All right, okay. go, go ahead. Oh, oh, all right. The network knocked him out. But Sulaiman, uh, please uh, keep trying. If you can still uh, get you in within the next one or two minutes, we would appreciate that. Sulaiman from Ijushaga, 80 and 0915387-7127. All right. Another message here says, um, good morning, Victor. I just specific plans for decongesting high traffic areas like Third Milan Bridge and Lekki Ekwe Expressway. You didn't put your name, by the way. All right, so do you have plans on that? Is that part of the policy? It's part of the policy, and it's the number one component of the policy when we talk about road infrastructure. Okay. Yes, it's for number one. It has to talk about optimization and utilization of the road network, either for both private and then public transport. So there are plans based on the policy to improve traffic flow on Lekki Corridor and other congestion areas. Let's quickly talk about the provisions that are in that uh, policy for non-motorized transport. Quickly. Yes. For non-motorized transport, we are talking about the use of bicycle, um, provision of walkway, within, and uh, presently, um, it has, the implementation has started at Lagos Island through Lamata, so, and is to provide an enabling environment. And in, in terms of road construction, um, the, go, the policy is looking at providing the bicycle lane and providing walkway. So in the construction of this road, do you have those lanes, those infrastructure that are put in place? I mean, the bicycle yes. lane, is it part of the road construction right now? Right now, it is, it is, it is not. Okay. Uh, but the walkway, when we talk about the walkway, the walkway, it is part of the road construction. Uh, because the policy has come out, any road construction that is to be, to, to any road construction will have the bicycle lane to protect the cyclist or to protect pedestrians. All right, then 080 Network playing pranks this morning, but keep trying. Let's see. Those of you around the Yanakwaja corridor, you might want to ask questions that relate to the policy and your location as well. What is the government planning with this policy to ensure that uh, seamless transportation uh, gets to your domain and uh, how is it going to be regulated? I'm sure you might want to ask questions around that as well. Ogba corridor too, and those of you uh, within the fringes of uh, the borderline in Lagos. What's happening? Quickly, let's drill a bit on water transportation. What does the policy say on the use of ferries, water taxis? Yes. Under, under the inland water component of, of the policy, it talks about the improvement and upgrading of, of jetties. And it talks about um, introduction of modern ferries. Mm. Yes. Okay. That's what it, uh, the policy. All right. Yes. So, so let's, let's begin to uh, bring this to an end now it's, as we gradually wind to the end of the program. In terms of the implementation, uh, the timelines for implementation, how many years are we going to be implementing this? Like I said, the implementation of the policy has started. When you look at the component of the policy, you will talk. You will be talking about the the public transport in terms of BRT. Is ongoing and is visible for everybody to see. When you talk about the rail transport, it's also ongoing. Mm. And other components, the, the non-motorized transport, like I said, as that one is also ongoing. And uh, it has, is, the implementation has commenced. It, it has commenced. So right. all other components. Um, traffic management. Last mile is on ground. We have last park. I'm um, talking about parking. Mm. Uh -huh. So the implementation of, of the policy 
is already on ground. And okay. the, the other components of the policy that are not on ground are uh, any moment from now, we, 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 we kick off, we commence. Like here, transport, right. we commence. So would there be a review of this policy from time to time? Yes, there, there will be review of the policy every five, five years. Every five, five every, years. Every five, five years. Right. As a round off, what, what does the policy say about uh, those who are the elderly and uh, people living with disabilities? Is there anything captured there quickly? Yes, it captures to provide to provide adequacy and safety for the elderly and then for people with disability. All right. The well, the like I said, the, the the policy is is total. Right. It takes all aspect of transportation, both human, vehicular, urban road transport, and talk of anything. All right. Yes. For those areas that you said are being implemented, we'll go to town very soon and then we'll hear from people on what they make of the Lagos transport policy. But right here, let's terminate the conversation at this point. Engineer Adirimu Agbemeji, nice having you in the building. Thank you so much for being here. It's a pleasure. Okay then, so that's how we've been able to try and unveil the A to Z of the Lagos transport policy. And my guest this morning, Engineer Adirimu Agbemeji, Director of Transport Policy and Coordination with the Ministry of uh, transportation in Lagos has been able to take us to the classroom on how it all works. We have to go. Mike James has produced this program. I say a big thank you to Bolanli Ogunola, who is the Director of Public Affairs for the Ministry of Transportation. In the building this morning, Jumokai Bilo, Senior Public Affairs Officer with the uh, Ministry as well. And of course, to our social media team, we do want to appreciate you. Our fair John and Okwemi Shodunke, our executive producer is Taya Conley. My name is Victor Oteri. I'm out. Stay very much within. Bye. I thank my maker, say I see today. The clouds are fading up, I see the sun rising again. But I still see something.